I saw grown men cry. Lots tougher and stronger than me, you know. They just don't want to go any further. Back, but I didn't give it that much thought. If you're an explorer, you're an explorer. And there's only one direction, forward. It began in 69, when two Norwegians, Tora and Arne, set off from Norway and drove to Bandar Abbas in Iran on the north side of the Persian Gulf. This became known as the world's longest truck route. Over a hundred trips were made before the oil crisis in 74 forced a lot of Norwegian ship owners into bankruptcy. And the adventures of the Bandar Abbas Express came to an end. The accomplishments of the drivers of this legendary route would not be forgotten. And yet, all their efforts would soon be surpassed. For in 76, an even longer trip was made. Hi, I'm called Jan. I'm a long distance trucker. For years, I was a sailor, but then I started raising a family and left the sea. Now I drive for a Norwegian trucking company based out of Sandefjord. I still travel a lot, only now I'm the captain. It's a good job and I like the combination of freedom and responsibility that goes with it. Sure, it gets a little monotonous at times, driving mile after mile all on my own. But you know, I like getting out and seeing the world, and that's a certainty in this job, with no two runs being alike. Roads, traffic lights, road signs. Take all these things away, and you're left with just plain desert track. Which way do you head for? How would you have got out of that? In those days, there were no mobile phones. Vi var jo unge, og vi brydde oss vel ikke så mye om noe. Vi var vel ikke redde for noe. Vi bare kjørte og regnet med det her går bra. One day I'm up in the mountains and snow of Norway. The next, well, here I am, preparing a maiden trip along what's been called the world's longest truck route. That is the Dubai Road Express stretching 6,000 miles in each direction. Yeah, well, you think a lot of the desert was hard, you know? It's the whole myth of their, the drivers being able to accomplish what they did. Here I am. Was he um, an outwardly brave, adventurous, uh, type to begin with before he went out on these trips to make him want to do it. Heading for the deserts and palm trees of the Middle East. Would they get to their destination? Would they run out of fuel? Would they survive? Miles and miles of loose sand and sweltering heat. You could die. You could definitely die. I'm a long-distance trucker called Jan, preparing a maiden trip along what's been called the world's longest truck route. But now I'm getting ahead of the story. You see, it all started a few days ago. There I was, relaxing in the mountains with my family, while at the same time, a long way off, something was happening. I. I used to have a big feeling in the bottom of my stomach, you know. Am I coming back for, for one thing? Because it was a dangerous job in those days. An unexpected breakdown aboard a ship bound for the Persian Gulf. And the necessary spare part was to be made in Norway. Then it had to be gotten to Dubai, where the ship could pick it up while en route into the Persian Gulf. Yeah, I'm here. I've driven five times to Bandar Abbas, and one time to Kuwait. 
det var det var väldigt speciellt. Skulle köra dit. Det var en jobb, men det blev långt. Vi har hyggligt långt. I was given the job of seeing the new part got to Dubai on time. Vi kunde inte sitta och se för oss hela hela sträckan. Vi måste tänka steg för steg nedover. I think my oldest boy was five when I left, and my youngest was three. You had to live two life, two different lives. I had to switch off from my family life, which was very difficult, obviously, because I'd got a young family. And then I had to go on to the truck trucking life again, you know. A final meal with the family, the last for some time. Det var i ungarna och frun en klem och så kör det. And it's time to hit the road. It was very exciting, you know what I mean? In a funny sort of way, you know, a challenge like that, you know, it's uh, it was adventure, really. You know, I was a young man then, and I didn't keep give a shit, really. <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> you know, driving through Europe's dead easy. It's just like driving in a parade. Just about anyone can do it. But after a couple of days, you're in Turkey, and this is where the trip really starts. The best place in the world to break down was Turkey, because you could always get repaired and made. If you hadn't got the part, they'd make it, like you know. Londra camp is in the European part of Istanbul. It's the meeting place for everybody driving to or from Asia. That was a big thing for us. The Londra camp was a middle of the road sort of. <laughs> I know. Well, there were some crazy guys on the road in those days, but I don't know. I, I came across these guys. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I thought, shit, oh, bloody hell. People are either heading home and taking a rest after the hardships of Asia, or they're getting ready for the jump to the next continent. I could never get away from there. <laughs> you know, you'd be stuck there for a couple of days, which meant nothing in those days, you know. But it's only a short break for me. Somewhere there's a ship waiting for me and the crate I'm carrying, and there's no room for delay. Ahead lies the loneliness and the adventure. På bensinstasjonen i Beograd. 1970, juli 1970. Da Så jag tankar diesel så kom en buss med lösarbetare som var på tur på en söndag och så började de slåss med varandra. Där var vi då två bilar och två fyra chaufförer. Så var jag färdig med tanke och tar han chaufförli han och då så kommer en en kille bak från mig och så drar fram en sån 7 centimeter spring springkniv som han dörkar med i mitt i ryggen med. I'm now heading for the bridge over the Bosporus. It starts in Europe and ends in Asia, for me at least. For others, it starts in Asia and ends in Europe. Once you cross that bridge, I mean, you were you were on your way. You you know, it, it was a different feeling. Men det var ju grejt upp i Europa, helt till vi kom på andra sidan Bosporus och förbi Ankara, då började det bli några dåliga vägar. Och du satt ju hela tiden och var var rädd för att bilen skulle rycka stränder sönder. Det var att hela tiden vara passa på att inte sitta dubbelt och sova. 
<laughs> I did have a map of the Middle East, but it was very, very basic. You know, there was only sort of few roads on there. We had to draw lines and, and you know, put indications like, like if I saw something that I, I could identify with, ah, you know, and I'd put the name of it on the line, like a tower or, or a burnt out car or something like that, which would never get moved. How they used to have accidents in desert roads like that, I never know, but it was a crazy place. Right now, I've got to reach Doha, and that's a nice little run of 2,000 miles, but at least I'll have a road all the way, thank God. big thing in those days was paperwork. You know, it was mind-boggling. Every time you went, it was different. You know, something had changed and because every country was different paperwork and, you know, like taxes for this, taxes for that. Everybody wanted money out of you and they wanted hard currency, like, you know, like dollars. Because we used to carry quite a bit of hard currency with us, you know, and people knew that we had to in different currencies, you know, and, and we were a target, really, you know, for being robbed and stuff like that. You had to be very, very vigilant, you know, and never leave anything anywhere. Tänkte ikke over. Visste ikke om det. Hva visste du ikke? Jeg visste ikke hvordan at det var, visste ikke at det var sånn, for å si det sånn. Vi var, det var, vi var på jobb, og nej, det var artig, var det skøy, var det for alle valg. But I think they were taken forward with the adventure. And I think once you've done it once and learned from that experience, you want to go further. Det märker jag första turen jag körde att den var när det blåste så så måste jag stoppa för att inte samma skulle komma in i bilen. Nästa tur jag körde då tog jag med en strumpebox till min fru. Nylon nylonstrumpe. Tredde den utanför intaget i filtret. Och den var ju mot att ut och börste veck flera gånger för bilen mitt att gå dålig och då var det tätt i det filtret. <laughs> Uh, we all have our comfort zones, things we're familiar with, and to take that away and go into a hostile environment would be quite frightening, I think, because when he was letting his tyre pressures down and let them down too far on blue two tyres, and he only had two replacements, should he have taken more spares with him? What would they do if another tyre had gone on that truck. Really, I should have turned back and bought some new tyres, but I didn't give it that much thought. If you're an explorer, you're an explorer, and there's only one direction, forward. I saw grown men cry. Lots tougher and stronger than me, you know? They just don't want to go any further. And they abandon trucks. I once figured out that it's about 30 million feet from Oslo to Dubai. Now look at me, digging my way along three feet at a time. I wonder how long it would take me if I had to dig all the way from Norway to here. I la merke det på filmen at bilen hadde Robson Drive, og den brukte den ikke. Den ville jeg nok kanskje prøve å bruke. I'd hoped to use my Robson drive in the loose sand, but neither it nor the bogey hoist works in the heat.
It's certainly taking time. Still, three feet is three feet. Getting closer all the time. Three feet closer to Dubai. Don't ask me why I set up the Norwegian flag in the sand. I've no idea. I guess I just panicked a bit and hoped the flag would give me some reassurance. Perhaps I thought I'd landed on the moon and wanted posterity to know that the first man on the moon with a truck was a Norwegian. I certainly felt like an explorer. bodily energy he went through, shoveling sand away from the tyres to, uh, to try and alleviate the obstacle so he could get grip to move forward. And then only moving a short distance and the same thing was happening again. So not an easy journey. Would they get to their destination? Would they run out of fuel? Would they survive? I, I drove a truck from Saudi Arabia to Holland. I'd broken down and uh, I was on my own. I was with two other trucks, but I'd got left behind. And these guys appeared out of the woods and started sort of playing around with this gun fired it around by over my head and stuff, you know, and I thought, oh, shit, you know. And then my other mates, because we had no contact, but we had a thing, you know, if one of us sort of dropped back, it'd be because there was a problem. So my one of my mates appeared. He came back, and then the guys just wandered off. We were in the same boat, you know. We all helped one another. But I was frightened to death to get back out of the truck again. I've made it to Doha. I'll be dropping off half my cargo here, but the rest's got to get to Dubai. First, there's 60 miles of asphalt. After that, nothing. Nothing but trackless desert. Miles and miles of loose sand and sweltering heat. This is the last chance for a little socialising. Going into the unknown, how much water do you take? How much food do you take to survive? You're not going to know when you next replenishment food or water or fuel. There were 
brave guys in their day. You know, there are Arab drivers who specialize in this run, and even some of them get lost. 14 people are said to have simply vanished out there in less than a year. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not scared, but you have to admit, it's quite a challenge. When you are there, it's something else that comes up, so it's almost... You have to take it just there and there and find out of it. Men det måste ju det här, vi måste ju över sandin eller över över de partierna för att komma fram och fram skulle vi. Det var inte nog bäm. Then you got to start thinking. We'll say the best way to do it is keep off the, the same track. On trips like this, it's vital to get as much good advice as possible. This guy knows quite a bit about the desert and warns me about some tricky spots. He also says I should change my large round diesel tank under the truck for another one with a different shape. Mine would get stuck in the sand when the wheels dig in, he says. Another tip he gives me is to keep as low tire pressures as possible when in loose sand. When the tire go down, obviously there's more width, you know, and it keeps you up higher, you know, you don't sink so much. With no map and no road signs, there's a very good chance of getting lost and no chance of help if something should happen. Enten måtte du kjøre i 10 kilometer og satt i sånn vaskebrett, eller så måtte du kjøre i 65-70 kilometer for å ligge flyte oppå. Men så er det jo litt risiko å kjøre litt for fort i, for fort i sånne situasjoner. For det kunne jo hende det at det plutselig var en sanddyne en meter eller to rett ned. You, you just straight down. It looked the same on the surface, you know. I'd obviously let out too much air. After about half a mile, two of my tires blew out. And I've only got two spares. Uh, if he'd had uh, another rear tire blowout, he could have made, relied on the tire alongside it, but a front one, he would have been down in the sand, stuck. How would he have got out of that? In those days, there were no mobile phones. You couldn't walk into a call box. What happens then? You could die. You could definitely die. I'm called Jan. I'm a long-distance trucker. I drive the world's longest truck route. That is the Dubai Road Express. But now things became a little more hairy. You see, nothing but trackless desert. Miles and miles of loose sand and sweltering heat. Går det här bra? Har du kommit fram? Grejer att komma över en sandhaug eller du sitter och tänker sånt? Kjørte du da ensam, og så ble du liggende der syk og fæl. Og i verste fall døde, holdt jeg på å si. Vi kan berette hvem Jan var. Jeg kjente den litt innen han kjørte Jan. Han må jo være en sånn type som liker å utfordre og liker å prøve nye ting, og gjøre ting som ikke nødvendigvis har vært gjort før. Jeg tror Jan gjorde det for eventyrlysten skyld for å se hvordan det var. Og da samtidig som, som man visste at vi andre hadde kjørt ned der også, ned til Persia, det var i Balarabas. Men han var jo på andre siden. Det var pioneers in their day. I take my hat off to them.
Jeg hadde gjerne rest inn til i dag også, ja. Det hadde jeg. Moon in the night sky, how brightly she shines. Now all the world's asleep. Running so deep. The trees in the coom keep the stars in the sky well hid from the stream. Well, that's that. Now all I have to do is drive back home. So quietly echoing the owl's cry, the valley hums her tune to the creaky old beach and the oaks lullaby as they wave gently to the bright moon. When I came home, well, it's very exciting, you know. Now all through the dark days and through the light, I'll be watching you. Drawn by the candle that shines through the night, down the hall upon the creaky floor behind the wooden door of your bedroom. Turning into that yard, that was a terrific feeling, you know, of achievement, really, because it was, I mean, you know, it was, it made it all worth it, you know, that feeling. <laughs>